What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is going to be part one of a three-part series videos where I'm going to be covering different type of arm balances that is not your typical handstand. I briefly mentioned some of these arm balances on one of my previous videos on five tips to better your balance when you're in a handstand and you guys asked me to cover them in greater detail. So that's what this series is all about. Arm balances are basically any position or shape you do with your body while using your arms or your hands to balance instead of your legs and your feet. There are many positions to learn, but for this particular series, I've chosen the ones that I use the most just because I enjoy them. I believe they increase your strength and awareness in critical areas of your body. They look nice and also you can use them for more advanced transitions in the future. Those transitions will be covered at the end of this series in an entirely new series called Transitions where we're going to be learning how to move through those moves into other moves such as the handstand. So make sure to put in the effort to learn all these moves so you can learn those transitions in the future weeks ahead. Finally, in order for me to make this series useful both for beginners and for advanced practitioners, I decided to cover two moves per video where the first one is going to be a little bit more easier and the second one is going to be a little bit more harder. With that being said, today we'll be covering crow post or frog stand and crane pose. So let's get started. Before we jump into crow pose, I really want you guys to understand our scapula and the four main positions that it has. This is because knowing the exact position that our scapula should be for each individual arm balance is not only critical but an entire requirement to really master that position. In short, our scapula has four main positions which are first one is going to be elevation, meaning bringing our shoulders up. Then we have depression, meaning bringing our shoulders down. Then we have protraction, bringing our shoulders forward, hollowing up our chest and rounding our upper back. And then we have retraction, bringing our shoulders back and bringing our shoulder blades back together to touch. So in order to maximize the support when we're doing crow pose or crane pose, we're going to be having to protract and depress our scapula. In order to really understand this, we're going to be performing a regular plank pose so we get a feeling of how our scapulas should be and how our scapulas should feel when we're doing the two arm balances. So let's begin on plank pose. First, you're going to imagine like you're pushing the ground away as much as you can. Here, we're going to be protracting our scapula. Second one, you're going to bring your shoulders down towards your legs, getting them farther away from your head. Here, we are depressing our scapula. Lastly, you want to imagine as you're bringing your hands together to touch by squeezing everything to the center line. This will create a stronger chest activation and a much, much solid support. So with that being said, now every time you do a plank pose, I really want you to focus on that protraction, depression and squeezing of your arms together. So you start building a solid foundation on that pose and that's going to transfer on other arm balances. So now let's begin with the first arm balance of today and that is crow pose. This this is probably the easiest and most common arm balance that there is, but for me it's one of the most fundamental positions that we can get our body into if you really want to be successful in our arm balancing journey. So you're going to start with the hands shoulder width apart, you're going to get your hips as high as you possibly can, and you're going to bring your knees to the little hole that is between the elbow and your triceps. Then you're going to lift one foot and let the other foot lift not by consciously lifting it, but by leaning forward enough that you allow the other foot to float by itself. You're going to feel the power coming from the center of your upper back by protracting your scapulas as much as possible. If you're doing this position right, you should be feeling really stable and really light every time you do the position. However, I'm going to leave you with two exercises for you to get that crow pose. And for you all advanced practitioners out there that already has a crow pose, I'm also gonna leave you with two advanced exercises for you to take it to the next level.
second position that we'll be covering today is going to be crane pose, which even though it looks really, really similar to crow pose, it is entirely different and maybe 10, 20, if not 30 times harder than what it is crow pose. This is because when we're doing crow pose, our arms are completely bent. We're working on bent arm strength, but when we're doing crane pose, our arms are completely straight. We're taking that variable out and all the power comes from our scapula and from our core and also from the leaning. When we're doing crane pose, we're gonna have a lot, a lot of pressure on the wrist because we do need to lean a lot in order for us to balance in that position. With that being said, to do crane pose, start the same way that you started with crow pose. Place your hands shoulder width apart and get your hips as high as you can. Then start walking forward and you're gonna place your knees as high on your triceps as you can, even all the way up to your armpit. Begin to lift one foot and then lean forward enough so the other foot lift by itself. You're going to feel the power coming from the center of your back because your arms shouldn't bend, not even a tiny bit. Now the biggest issue that we have when we're doing crane pose is going to be our wrist extension flexibility. So if you're feeling a lot of pain or if you don't have enough wrist extension flexibility, what you can do and go about it is moving your hands slightly to the outside and create like a little V with your thumb and your index finger and lean forward in the middle of that V. In that way, we're taking a lot of pressure out of the wrist. However, if you have a master crane post, I'm going to leave you again with two exercises for you to do and get that position. And again, for all of you advanced practitioners, here are two advanced exercises that you can do to take it to the next level. So there you have it guys, that's the video. Give these two positions a try. Whether you already have the positions or not, try to master them so by the end of this series, you can start using them into more advanced transitions. Stay tuned for part two, where I'll be giving you guys two arm balances more to learn. I've already chosen them, but if you have any future ideas or if you have any position or arm balances that you want to learn, please leave it in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to cover that as well. Also, let me know your experiences with these two arm balances. Do you already have crow pose? Do you already have crane pose? If not, what are you struggling with? Shoot me some questions down below. I'll do my best to answer as many as I possibly can. With that being said, if you enjoyed the video, give me a big thumbs up to support the channel. Also, if you're new to the channel, subscribe for more content like this and I will see you guys all next week. Peace.